everybody, you're Luke McElroy from Mess Performance Consulting, here today with Nick Jane Koskis. What we're going to do today is talk about oxygen deficit, steady state and EPOC. You might notice here, Nick's got a fancy new piece of gadget on here, which is basically a portable VO2 max testing machine. So you can see on the screen, we're actually live recording his acute responses. He's got his respiratory rate, his tidal volume, his ventilation, VO2, heart rate and VO2. You might see a few of them drop out, that's just because he's at a very low ventilation. It's going to kick up in a sec. What we're going to do is take lactate at rest, and then we're going to push him up to 11.5 k's an hour. So he's only at three at the moment. So he's relatively resting. And we're going to talk about his energy system contribution as we increase that intensity from three k's right the way up to 11.5. So I'll come around now and Nick's resting lactate is 0 0.8. Okay, so normally one to two is resting. So he's well rested today, which is really good to see. What I'm going to do in right now is put him up to 11.5 k's an hour. Now we know energy system interplay, right? At all stages throughout exercise, all three energy systems are contributing to energy production, but it's the intensity and the duration which determine the relative contribution of each. Now Nick's only running at 11.5, so this is this is quite sub-maximal for him. But because the duration is so low, we're going to see. I'm going to take his lactate in about 40 seconds, and you can see his acute responses are increasing. He's actually taking in more air, more ventilation. His heart rate is increasing. If your acute responses are increasing, you have to be in oxygen deficit where your oxygen supply does not meet oxygen demand. So I'm going to take a lactate sample during this deficit, and we're going to see if it's increased. Then after that, we're going to let him run for another couple of minutes and reach a steady state where supply does meet demand, see what happens to his anaerobic glycolysis system. And that's going to be determined by his lactate increasing or decreasing. So he's been going for just about 60 seconds. He's going to come around and grab that finger again. Good Nick, keep running. So that's one minute down. So even though it's a submax workload, he needs to use the anaerobic glycolysis system a little bit to, in to, to get that energy demand while he's increasing his acute responses, while his aerobic glycolysis system is increasing its contribution. So his lactate now is at 1.5. So it went from 0 0.8 up to 1.5. So what does that mean? Well, we know that the lactic acid or lactate is a byproduct of the anaerobic glycolysis system. So because that's come up, we know Nick has to have used or have an increased contribution in his anaerobic glycolysis system. So what we're going to do now, let him run for another two minutes at that same workload, let his acute responses hit a steady state where supply does meet demand, we'll see what happens to his anaerobic contribution. Alright, so Nick's been running for three and a half minutes at this workload. As we can see with his acute responses, he started to hit a steady state. Let me scroll over here. We can see that his heart rate started to plateau, as is his his ventilation and his oxygen consumption. So because he's now hit a steady state where supply does meet demand, I want to go over and take his lactate again, and it should be the same or less than it was before, now that the aerobic glycolysis system is now the dominant supply. So let's go have a look. Getting his lactate now. And we can see here it's actually at 1.4. So he hasn't, he's not producing any more lactate. It went from 1.5 down to 1.4, and it's all because he's reached a steady state. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop the treadmill and we're gonna take Nick's, we're gonna see how long it takes for Nick to come back to a complete resting state. So I'm gonna press stop on the treadmill now, Nick. Grab the sides, take the time. And what I want you guys to have a look at is his acute responses. So now, he's come back down to complete rest, but we're not gonna see his acute responses immediately come down. See heart rate, 156, 154. Okay, now we've got this warning coming up because he's getting below 30 liters of ventilation, which is the minimum for this machine. But let's have a look at heart rate, 144, 143. He's not back down to 60 straight away. So he's in what we call EPOC, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. He now, he, he can't just come straight back to resting. He now has essentially more supply than the man, okay? So he, he, he needs to gradually come back to what we call homeostasis. We need increased oxygen because he's gonna send blood to the skin to start sweating. He's gonna metabolize the lactate that he had. Um, he's going to, to transport nutrients around the body. So we don't just come straight back to resting. It takes a gradual process, 125 heart rate, 124 heart rate, as we see. So in the beginning, we're in an oxygen deficit when we increase intensity because 
our acute responses are increasing, all right? So the supply does not yet meet demand. That's why we have more anaerobic contribution as we saw with lactate. Then we hit a steady state where supply does meet demand, all right? So all of his acute responses are the same. The anaerobic glycolysis contribution decreased because the aerobic glycolysis system was now dominant and it was at a steady state where supply met demand. At the end, we didn't come straight back down to resting because we still have metabolic byproducts and we still have heat load stress and we still have nutrients that we need to circulate to get back down to homeostasis. So eventually he will get back down to 60, but it's not straight away. So let's have a look at this graph. You can see it is gradually coming back down. It doesn't go straight away from max to resting.